Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not, and welcome to the show. Hey, sorry we were running late. I had a tech issue on my side that kind of fucked us up a little bit, but here we are now. Ta-da! And on July 4th, no less. Um, now, I work on July 4th, but I know some of y'all out there don't, so maybe you're still watching from the office and stuff. I want to give another warning in advance so everybody knows. Um, if you haven't seen the show before, this is... We're very much not politically correct around here, and we, we very much, it's not safe for work. So please, for the love of God, if you got the kiddos in the room, you're home for the holidays, or what, don't watch us in front of them. I don't want to have, have to, I can explain all the words to them if you really want me to. Um, but uh, that being said, let's get into this. This week is, this whole month is a huge month for us. Um, for one, we are working a lot. We got a lot going on. Um, today, we're finishing up a project. Um, it's uh, Heroes at Home, that series. I think we did book one about a month ago. This is a Podium project. Podium is a fairly new publisher for me. Uh, we're working on book two today, finishing that up. It's a dual narration with uh, J.F. Harding. Um, then we're jumping right into Irresistible Dragons. Everyone has been talking about this. By the way, hi, everyone. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Susan. I, uh, everybody else has scrolled past me there. Everyone's been talking and anticipating this Nora Phoenix um, series. Everybody knows here is a Spill Omega. So that's a 10-book series. I think we worked on it about a year or two ago. And my God, that was a run. That was a lot of stuff going on. And in fact, now we've got the bundle for that that's come out. Everybody's excited about that. It's a hell of a deal. And Nora has now jumped into producing a spinoff series. And it's not necessarily a spinoff, I guess. It is, it is, but it's not. You'll see what I mean. Um, but Irresistible Dragons, um, implied by the name. we got some dragons going on. Um, little Lissa Gramling just saw a little comment there. I think you do hate Tom Hanks, Lissa. I, I have that on good authority. Um, but um, after, uh, after Irresistible Dragons, I don't even remember what we're getting into next. Um, I'd have to look at the schedule. We've got a lot going on. The other thing that's going on this month are a shit ton of videos. Obviously, uh, um, our guest today, I'm going to be bringing him on in a minute, actually jumped in at the last minute. We did not have July 4th booked. Um, holidays and everything, and we were like, well, we don't know, but this guy was kind enough to jump in, and we really appreciate that. Tomorrow, we've got Andrew Gray coming in for one of his live readings with us. Um, they do at the reading, you might say. Uh, that's happening at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard, or JST. On Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday, we're going to be back in the MM Fantasy and Paranormal group, celebrating their 3,000 members there. And this time around, we have Morgan Bryce coming in, um, and that's going to be fantastic. Those are kind of different segments. I'm labeling them as story time segments, and it's it kind of is. In the beginning, I'm going to be doing a live read from one of Morgan's books that I've narrated, and then after that, we're going to have a Q&A session between the author and I. We're going to ask each other questions, and as well, of course, we have a questions from the crowd that we'll field too. Uh, we just did our first one yesterday and it was fantastic. We've got four more of those coming up, uh, including Morgan's over the course of July to celebrate their 3,000 members. That's going to be in a different group. Again, MM Fantasy and Paranormal Group. If you're not a member, we have it posted in the Facebook group. Please, by all means, jump over, become a member. They have it set up specially so that anyone from this group that jumps over to there is automatically approved, so you don't have to wait for approval or anything. Um, I think that's it. Um, uh, Friday, Saturday and uh, Friday, Saturday, and next Monday I have gigs, um, each day. So that's, it's going to be an exciting time. And we also have talk to the beer going on next Monday as well. So we are busy as shit. Anyways. Um, no, I, Tracy's asking me if Morgan's is tomorrow. I thought it was the sixth, uh, Trace. Uh, that's what I have it on the schedule as is the sixth, but damn it. You better double check that for me just to make sure, but I'm almost positive it's the sixth. Anyways, uh, the guy that we have coming on today is um, an up-and-comer in the industry. Uh, this is a name that we've been seeing pop up on the Rambling Gramlin show, which, Lisa, I was just about to mention that. we got that coming up on Thursday, too. Um, and on the uh, Rambling Gramlin show, we go through all the new releases of the month, as you know. Um, and little Lisa Gramling talks about her hatred of Tom Hanks. But um, this guy's been popping up more and more. I've been seeing the name. And amazingly enough, when Trace reached out to him, he was available to jump on it on July 4th here. So without any more from me, except you know I'm going to keep on talking, I give you Lance West. Hello, Lance. Hey, John. Thank you so much for inviting me up here. It's such a pleasure to be here on Talk to the Beard. Yeah, um, you didn't wear your beard. I'm a little disappointed in that. Yeah, well, I have a story about that. Yeah. If you want me, I'll just jump right into that. So well, let's, let's hear it. Okay, great. So like you said, I am, I'm, I'm a new, new voice on the scene. Um, I have been narrating audiobooks for ju just about a year now. 
and one of the first authors I worked with. And can I name drop authors? Please, by the love of That's, God, they okay, love great. it, yes. Uh, so I, I, I found my way into MM Romance through an audition that I did for an Amy Bellows title. And she listened to my audition and she sort of, she, she took a chance on me, basically. And she said, well, hey, you know, I will, you, you've got a good sound. I like your voice. You're, you know, clearly a talented performer. And she let me know that I needed to like, you know, up my tech game a little bit. And so I went and upped my tech game a little bit and came back to her. And she said, so I really want you to read for, I really want you to give a shot for this, to this title. And that was the beginning of Omega from the Ocean, where um, she was just hooked by my performance of Jack the Merman Shifter Omega. Um, and it was a an amazing experience, and it was a, a phenomenally well-written book. Amy's a terrific writer. And we started booking other work together. And she said something about like, well, you know, if you're interested, like if you, you know, if you like this genre, if you want to get into this work, you should look up this guy. His name's John Solo. He's done a really terrific job making a name for himself, making an identity for himself in the MM romance genre. And so I was like, oh yeah, I, you know, market research, I'm new here. I got to educate myself as much as I can. Uh, so I, I looked up this guy, this John Solo, and uh, there is this dashing man with a great big beard. And I said, well, okay, clearly he's got the, the beard corner of the market covered, and I can't really grow a beard. So I started growing my hair. And uh, so I've got the on top of the head uh, hair going covered and, you know, I'll leave you the, the, the buxom beard area of well, the, uh, the congratulations on it too. I mean, um, uh, the, 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 the Goldilocks thing you got going on there is, uh, now I, I must tell you, um, in my younger years and I'm, I'm getting to be an old man at this point, but in my younger years, um, I had, uh, hair incredibly similar to yours, um, and it oh, was yeah. it was it was long blonde. I was I was a uh, I was a, I was a rock star back in the day, right? So I had really long hair, and I loved to headbang and that sort of thing. And that's what I had. And at some point, there was a choice that happened where, it, and this was actually you know kind of a near death experience. I don't know if you've ever had anything like that happen to you. It was a major accident, and uh, <clears throat> I had the choice. And you've heard of these types of choices before, right? Where you can you can choose to come back to life or, or you not it's kind of up to you um and, and not many people get that but i did in my near-death experience the choice was at this point um i i said i i absolutely want to come back absolutely i'm not done here he said well it'll cost your hair that's the way it went for me so now i don't have any fucking hair on my head but i got this great beard that's uh and by the way, if you couldn't smell the bullshit of that story about a mile away. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, dude, oh, I, I, you, you've been doing incredibly well in the, in, in the industry, really. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about you. In fact, uh, in the comments already, there have been people that have commented on a, uh, apparently a book called We Choose You. Or, yeah, We Choose You by uh, Katie Mance. Was that one of the ones you worked on? Yeah, that's actually... Um... That was one of my most recent releases, and man, I tell you, I you know, I want to stay away from doing too much promotion here because that's not what we're here for. But Katie is a new author in the scene. This is her first release, and this title is it's it's short. I think it's a two and a half hour audiobook, and it's really really sweet, uh, really like uh, authentic relatable enjoyable characters she's you know like she, there's obviously a lot more going on there in her head that's perhaps going to be coming out in later books in the series but uh just such a uh, such an authentic genuine sweet person and i'm i just feel so great to be able to be working with her and it was a super fun project 
to get to narrate. So three characters, it was a, 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 a married couple, chosen mates, an alpha and a beta. And then the alpha randomly comes across his fated mate, who's an omega. And then the, this fate, they, they sort of, you know, run away from each other quite literally, and then end up being sort of forcibly brought back together. And, you know, interesting story commences. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's been, it's been getting, a re it's been really well received. And I'm just, I, I'm so pleased because here's this new author who's, you know, a, a really terrific person who really deserves to be finding some success. And I sort of, I don't know, I felt like as a barely experienced narrator, I kind of took her, I don't want to say under my wing, because that's not real. But <laughs> I stepped in and said, I think you're new to audiobooks. And I, I'd really, your writing looks really good. I'd really love to help you through this process and, you know, get us produce something really exciting. And I think we did that. And it's, you know, it's been out for maybe a month now, mm -hmm. maybe less. But it's uh, it's been meeting some, you know, so it's been getting a really good reception, getting some acclaim, and I'm really excited about it. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been in touch with Danielle Maria, who is the administrator for the MM Fantasy and Paranormal Romance Readers group mm -hmm. on Facebook, and she's been trying to she's been trying to get in touch with Katie, and I just she reached out to me and said, hey, I. I I'd love for, you know, this author to be part of this month because it's so exciting with all of this 3,000 members and audiobook celebration. Uh -huh. and so I just connected them on email and hopefully we'll be seeing a bit of a bit more of Katie Mann's maybe even in that group uh, somewhere in the next few weeks of this uh, celebration in the MM Fantasy and Paranormal Romance well, readers did you group. did you mention to Daniela? Um, I, I I have it on good authority that she would absolutely love to have you or the author or both connect and, and come on and do some sort of live video like we're doing right now in the group. Have you mentioned that to Danielle at all? Oh yeah, and we are uh, we're we're hopefully. I I was actually it was like one of those um, you know jumping up and down like a giddy schoolgirl moments when I saw my name on her roster announcing mm -hmm. the the big July audiobook month, I just went, oh my gosh, it's, it's me. <laughs> it's real. That's, um, uh, you mentioned a couple times in there how nice that author was. Um, and, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude here. I forget the author. It was Katie, what was her last name? Katie Manns. Excellent. I know she's a new author. Um, it, this has become incredibly important to me in my business um, of when I find authors, and I'd like to talk to you about how you do that, but um, when I find authors and clients, um, the being able to deal with them on a personal level and being able to speak with them honestly and openly has become one of the most important attributes for me working with someone. Um, you mentioned this a couple of times, which is why I'm kind of bringing it up. I think it interests you as well. Um, <clears throat> being able to um, talk with somebody on a level aside from business and being able to be friendly with them has become vital to me in my business. I've found that no matter how good the author is or quite frankly, how much they're willing to pay me, if I don't like them, it ain't going to fucking work. It's just that simple. Um, I cannot connect with them on that level. Luckily, I've been at it a while. I'm at a point where I can be a bit pickier and choosier about it. Um, but connecting with somebody like that makes a huge difference um, to me. Uh, tell me about how you're finding your clients at this point. How are you reaching out to new authors being new in the industry? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. And I, I will say that connecting with a client is is of paramount importance to me. Uh -huh. um, I personally work primarily with independent authors and on indie projects, and it's there's nothing quite like being an artist and working with another artist to co-create something that's a, a that, that's a, you know it's just a, another piece of art that's mm -hmm. a you know taking someone's art and adding your own art and making new art out of existing art it's it just 
I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's what we do mm -hmm. and the ability to do it in a way that feels really collaborative and co-creative is really important to me. I'd say that in my career that the, you know, aside from, you know, getting reviews on Audible and on all of the, in all the places from readers and listeners is wonderful. And it's like, you know, it's like the bread and butter of my artist's ego, but getting praise and acknowledgement and like real validation from the authors to me is it's like, I, I can't even make a comparison. I mean, it's, it's like the best thing that can happen. If an author comes to me and says, wow, I just, I really love what you did with my book, with my characters, like you nailed this, you know, you, I, I really, you sounded like the character in my head and you felt like that character felt to me, then I, I, I sleep well at night, uh, wow. you know? I, when, and that's just, it's just so important to me. And something that I, you know, worry a little bit about regarding working with publishers. I mean, I've been, I've, it was a shock to me to learn that I would have to, you know, in working with publishers, and I, I do have uh, something coming down the line with, uh, you know, sizable publishing house, which I'm really excited about. And when I found out that I needed to ask permission before I could even talk to the author uh -huh. from the publisher, I was like, what are you guys talking? Like, that must be, that's not real, is it? That can't be real. Like the publishers would want to nurture and encourage. And granted, I, I also know that there are some folks out there who, you know, are, that I have witnessed narrators experience, you know, authors or rights holders who are, who want to micromanage, who want to like, you know, make all these little tweaks and adjustments and really have a, exert a level of control that would be counterproductive to the process of bringing to life an audiobook. But that goes right along with finding the right people to work with. It goes oh. right along with working with people who appreciate and respect the work that we do as narrators and who, you know, don't have to be quite so fixed in what they, on, in the outcome of their project. If they can say, well, I trust you to make something great of this because I've, you know, you do good work. I, I liked your, you know, your sound, the sample that they sent me or you sent me was great. Go ahead. I'm, I can't wait to see what you do. Um, which is a real, I mean, they're putting a lot of trust into us to, uh -huh. you know, take their baby and nurture it into something, you know, pretty different from the the print version. Well, I and, think a, um, there's a confidence level that's involved here, too. Um, by the way, you have, uh, I absolutely love uh, the, the way you're handling yourself right now and the way you're talking and, and the things that you're actually saying was so... Dude, you have, I saw six books on Audible. Is that correct? Do you have six books? Have you done any, have you done any more? I mean, are there, is there a different name that you worked under in the past or not that I need to I know think if you there's, have, but... there's a few, there's more than, do I have more than six? I, I have I more, I must have more than six, six I, books. I could be wrong. <laughs> but it's only something like eight. Yeah. Um, okay. No, yeah. I've actually, I, I also, I work under a, a pseudonym in a, in a different genre that's, mm -hmm. um, and, but uh, yeah, I've got nine, nine listed on Audible now. I just had another release. A, you know, six is kind of like a, nine a couple if you turn around. That's it's yeah. the same. Yeah, it's the same it's fucking basically thing. the same. It <laughs> just depends on which way well, you're on. If you're sitting on your ceiling, it makes perfect sense. So even with the, with the, and obviously we don't need to know your, your other pseudonym, but I mean, are, are you under a hundred books total uh, somewhere in there? I'm somewhere? under, I, I mean, I have, so I'll say I'm actually going to be celebrating my one year anniversary of my first release on audible dude it's in incredible like a week and a half or something i mm -hmm. i'm i'm very excited i will have i'll have completed 20 books uh within my first 
the, within a year of my first release, which... The, the way you were speaking and the maturity level that you're speaking with about things in the industry, um, one would think that you have 150 books under your belt. So congratulations. That's impressive. Well, thank Good you. job, dude. Um, right. A couple of the things that you hit on there... Um, I, I wish I would have known some of the things that you already seem to have a good knowledge of. I, dude, I, I was probably 100 books easily deep until I understood a few of these concepts. One you talked about was micromanagement, which has become absolutely, this is something we all face. Um, and it just depends on how you handle it. And plus what your comfort level is. Some narrators that are very experienced still really enjoy a process of being micromanaged a bit because it's, how would I say in my mind, I think it's a confidence level of, of where you are in your own narration and your interpret your ability to interpret somebody's work, because that's truly, I think, what we're getting paid to do. They have done their piece of, of, of work here. They've got a, a gorgeous book that they've written. They've dumped their soul into it. It's ready to be published. Now they're handing it to an actor to, uh, they're paying us to give our interpretation of it. Um, it's a very different matter than them saying, I want to produce an audio book. At that point, they would be in the producer's chair, and every couple of paragraphs, they would jump in and say, no, 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 I want you to change it to this voice, or no, 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 no. can you deliver it in this fashion? Could, could you put the stress on this word? My de definition of micromanagement is someone asking me to give my interpretation of the work, but then wanting to produce as an armchair producer. So instead of having the convenience of someone in my headphones the entire time telling me how they would like to make changes. Instead, I submit my work and then they give me a list. And that, based on the technical details of how we do our job in front of a microphone, punch ins, punch outs being what they are, makes it so incredibly difficult to do our job that one, it becomes very uh, uh, de defeating of cost. The price that I charge per hour is going to have to triple if we're gonna work that way. and. Two, um, it kills my confidence in what I'm doing. I think mm -hmm. it comes down to confidence. Um, because now every time I'm, I'm acting out a line, I'm second guessing myself. I'm thinking, is my interpretation going to line up with what they want? Now, personally, at this point, I just do me. People know who I am and they're hiring me to be me. Um, there are far better actors out there on the market. They're really good, and I can name them. They're amazing guys, but they're not me. Just that fucking simple. So when somebody hires John Solo, they get I speak of myself in third person. They 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 they're hiring they're hiring me, and they know what I'm gonna do. Um, it's not that it's that hard to interpret. You've got a few hundred books. <laughs> you know, if if you don't know who I am, go check it out. And if you like what you what I do, then hire me. If you don't, hire somebody else. Um, publishers though are a very different matter. See, in the beginning of my career, um, <clears throat> what I would do is I would give a, a, you know, they call it the first 15 in ACX land, right? Um, mm -hmm. You record your first 15, you submit that. And I would also give a list of character voices with samples for each one that I was planning on doing. So they could approve or deny each voice sample. I figured that would make me bulletproof. Look, you've approved the first 15, you approved all these voices, you know what I'm going to do. That way, now you know, you can't come back at the end of the production and say, I want the main character's voice changed or some nightmare scenario like that. Right. I used to do that and that took a lot more work and it also invited micromanagement. I didn't realize that at the time. And and I'm not saying that's a bad way to work because it's, it's actually a pretty good way to work. What I am saying is now, a little bit later on in my career, I don't do that at all. In fact, I got to be honest with you, a lot of times the first 15 is irrelevant at this point. Um, they've hired me, they know what I'm going to do. It's just that simple. So the first 15, especially after I've worked with a client a couple of times, oftentimes to facilitate getting the book through ACX quicker, I will upload the sample from the last book that I did for them for the first 15 of this production. Um, <laughs> for a while I uploaded bullshit samples. I used to save outtakes of funny things that happen in the booth. I'm sure these happen to you. You're oh, right in the middle yes. of a line and a fart happens, or you're right in the middle of a line and you mess it up in a humorous fashion or whatever it is. I used to save those. So instead of the first 15, I would upload one of those dumb things. <laughs> and they would hit approve <laughs> because they're confident. They know they've hired me. I'm going to do my job. And uh, they're very confident in that. That's what they want to do. Now, this has helped me in a number of ways, but... I don't know that it's the right way for everybody to go. Um, 
Right now, are you sending over a lot of stuff to your clients? Are you uploading one chapter at a time and having them approve? How, how are you working it? Um, I've been, I, I'm working in a, you know, I, I'm working on a first 15 kind of basis as well. Um, like I am, uh, I'm waiting to hear back right now on the first 15 for a project that I'm really looking forward to starting, um, which I'll just go out on a limb and say it's, it's the, the sequel to Fairy Daddy by Amy Bellows called All Revved Up. Excellent. And it's been highly anticipated. It's going to be very exciting. It's, uh, you know, again, really well written. And um, <laughs> and Amy's on vacation. Good for her. I'm super stoked. She works really hard mm -hmm. and um, taking some time away from the keyboard and spending it with the family is of the utmost importance. Um, and I, I give that level of personal detail only because I know she shares that in her Facebook group. So I feel comfortable and confident doing that. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm waiting to hear. I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm waiting till she gets back from vacation to really to like dive into the bulk of it, because just in case and this this book has characters from previous books and a bunch of new characters and some interesting accents. And um, so I've been putting in a lot in the on the front end in preparing and practicing and um and i i'm confident that it's going to be great and i want to you know i want to get that green light from her mm -hmm. right from the get-go um and that that does feel important to me and there are some uh, there are some people i work with who don't get that first 15. And like you said, it's oftentimes people I've worked with before. Like I've just, I'm, I'm waiting for pickups on a project uh, that I that I did for an author back in the beginning of the year. And it's the sequel to that original book. And he loved the work that I did. This was one of those authors that like really gave me the affirmations that I so crave mm -hmm. um, working with his baby that that he generated out of his mind and then i i got the privilege of performing um and he didn't get up he didn't want a first 15 he was just like go 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 for it yep. just yeah i know there's you're gonna this, do a great job well there's that comfort level that's involved too that we were talking about where uh it, i don't have you do you know who uh sean pratt is um he's oh like, yeah yeah okay um i i did i never did finish his i feel like luke skywalker going off before i finished my training with yoda but i didn't i didn't finish my ginger yoda training um mm -hmm. i did enough of it though hey before i get into this real quick uh Alyssa grambling is, is has asked this twice now it means it must be a big deal are you going to grl this year you know i have been really um i've been i've been deeply considering whether i'm going to be traveling for um, any any public appearances, I would love to. Uh, I, I'd love to do GRL. Where where is it happening this year? For Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, so that would be tough for me. I'm on the other side of the um, of the fifty nifty, and so it'd take me. You know, um, I, and I sort of it occurred to me that maybe it would be that like hitting the conferences and things might be something I, I look towards next year for doing uh -huh. being as sort of, you know, green, uh, well, as I am. It's fucking expensive here. too. <laughs> there's, there's no they're traveling across the country and all that. It, that's, it's money, dude. I get it. Yeah. Um, I, I've, uh, I've only done two of them. I was prepared to do more than that, but, uh, I did my first one in 2019. That was my first year of conventions. I did one in Amsterdam, which is, really expensive. Um, then I did one in, uh, uh, I guess it was Albuquerque was my first one. I forget. Um, but then the following year COVID hit and then you know, nobody was doing anything. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, we just couldn't do it. And last year we, we, we did it again and it was, it was a ton of fun. Um, <clears throat> but they are phenomenal for networking, which is obviously an important deal yeah. to us. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, so I'm so sorry, Alyssa Grambling, you didn't ask it twice. Somebody else asked it too. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> So Sean Pratt has this part in his training, um, and we've talked about it before on the air here, but uh, he has this thing that he talks about, about uh, qualifying a job and basically whether you should take a job or not. And his first one is, is it going to make money? His second one is, is it good for your career? And the third one is, is it going to be fun? And he said, if you can yeah. say yes to at least two of those, 
take the job. It's a no-brainer. One, don't take the job. Three, absolutely, and maybe even consider taking it for less if you have to. I added a fourth in there um, because, of course, I'm I'm all knowledgeable and I'm Sean Pratt and who the fuck cares. But um, mine was specifically, do I like them? And it's because of situations yeah. like this, which arise with me. Um, I'm not implying that uh, my way is better or any because I don't think it is, but it works for me in particular in the way I operate. Um, and the fact that 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 being able to, having an author be able to confidently tell you um, very early on if they don't like something is critical to me. Um, me being able to tell an author, we're not right for each other on this book. You should get somebody else. Hard discussions like that are hard for me to have if I'm not on a comfort level with this person. If I don't like them, if I don't feel like I can chill and say things like fuck on the air with them. And that it's just, there has to be that comfort level for me. So I put in that fourth one. And that fourth one actually weighs a lot heavier to me than the other three combined even. Um, if the, mm -hmm. if the gig pays really well and it's great for my career and I don't like them, well, let's be honest. I'm a whore for money. I might say yes the first time. I'm not the second. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it is what it, 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 and I will do some projects that I don't particularly enjoy even if I really like the person knowing that, you know what, this is a body of work. This might not be my favorite project, but man, I love this person to death. They're one of my favorite people. Yeah, I'll take this book. We'll make it work. Um, now, if I don't feel I'm right for it, that's another matter. But um, going back to pubs, um, I, I don't. Are you permitted to say what publisher you're going to be working for here shortly, or are you still kind of on the other side of that? Well, I haven't signed any any NDAs or anything like that. Gotcha. So I, I I'm happy to say that um, that that Tantor has has approached me with an offer. Excellent. Which I'm really looking forward to. Apparently, they're you know, they're a little bogged down mm. in their production line right now. So I'm I'm just I'm kind of playing that waiting game now. They're you know, I got a message you know a week and a half ago that was that like, hey, will we're <laughs> we're still working on this. We'll we'll keep you updated as we get closer. And so I'm I'm just waiting. Dude, that's incredible. hanging out. 20 some books, I mean, total 20 some books and you are getting with, I was 150 books deep before I started working with Tantor. Good job, man. That's impressive. Well, and I, you know, I got my, I, I took good, the good advice of getting myself some coaching. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say that that has taken me from, you know, from, from being out in left field to like really taking myself seriously, taking my time seriously, having the, the confidence in my work, in my equipment, in my samples that, that, you know, it would have taken me 50 to a hundred books to be able to get on my own. Uh -huh. And with the, with the help of some really, you know, excellent people and communities, I've, I've invested in myself to a point that is really actually working for me. That's phenomenal. So I, Thank you. Um, and, you know, I guess I'm trying to say I can't take all the credit for it, but I'll take the credit for choosing to <laughs> invest in myself. I, I did choose to get help, and okay. that was huge for me. Well, coaching is a big <laughs> that, deal. That was a when, big one. when I started, I was working in a bubble. I didn't know anyone in the community, and I literally talked seven or eight of my friends into coming to narrate MM Romance audiobooks because I picked up a shit ton of work from a, a, a publisher in the industry. And I couldn't handle it all by myself. So I talked people into coming and, hey, anybody else want to be an audiobook narrator this week? And that's how we started. <laughs> oh, what do you what do you got happening there? What you... Uh, so I've got a guest appearance. <laughs> this is Lucy. Lucy? Oh, oh, yeah. See, now you've now you've made friends with about, uh, what are we up to, Tracy? <laughs> 1,400 people at this point? Yep, you're in. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Lucy, say hello. This would be a good opportunity to ask you a question from the crowd that just came in because you have your family in front of you now. Does your do your family know what you narrate? I think they're asking specifically from the crowd about the MM Romance stuff. Do they know that you narrate MM Romance? Do you know about the work I do? <laughs> <laughs> she loves it. Uh, she really does. Um, <laughs> oh, fantastic. here we go. Oh, look at that. Um, you know... Some of my family does, some of my family does not. 
it's a, um, you know, my, my, my children do not at this mm-hmm. point. Um, but they don't know about any of the romance I do. Mm-hmm. So that's not necessary. That that's not, you know, any kind of specific to the MM side of it. Um, my, like my parents know that I work under a pseudonym as well as a pseudonym, as well as, you know, myself. Mm. And they aren't uh, oddly very interested. They're like, okay. And they leave it at that. Um, but I think it's, you know, I, I feel really, I feel very confident in the work that I do. Mm -hmm. I feel no sense. In fact, I love the work that I do and I'll be the first one to, um, to be very vocal about this and have been in the past in places like Facebook. Mm -hmm. But I believe really strongly in the way that the MM romance genre and specifically the MPreg and Omega verse uh, subgenres within that really allow for, uh, for, for readers and listeners to connect to themes and tropes in romance that in a way that's actually a lot easier than for them for, than in a, you know, cis gendered hetero romance novel where the the female character is buxom and skinny and has luscious blonde curls and the male character is macho and they and and all of the things Uh but the in these in this genre it it takes the it takes the gender out of the romance it allows for there to be people in love, people in lust, people experiencing all the things that we all experience, but without that that very specificity of that they are supposed to look a certain way, that they're supposed to behave a certain way, that a, a woman looks like this and acts like this and behaves like this and a man looks like that and acts, et cetera, et cetera. It allows for it allows for readers to really connect to these stories, to the characters and the element of fantasy to it, the shifters and the Omega verse just creates a platform where, yeah, it's a step away from our reality, but sometimes that's what it takes for us to really get it. Sometimes uh-huh. that's what it takes. You know, what I love about fiction is that I, and I, I was talking to a friend some time ago and they said, oh, I only read nonfiction because that's real. And, and I said, you know what? I, I mostly read fiction because that is true. It is the, it's, it's this depiction of the human experience in differently imagined scenarios. In, it, it's the, it's a much truer, tapping into what our experience is like as humans Uh and you know all the feelings and the the urges and the the anxieties and the confusion that nonfiction doesn't really get into i mean sure there's you know books about all of those things individually but the the portrayal by fiction of all of these human experiences is what i love about it and what i love about this genre is that it it makes it accessible for anyone and everyone, and especially those who don't conform to the stereotype of like the cover of a romance, not of a you know of a Nora Jones like a, a cishet romance novel. And I just love that. I, I I just I had never I had I had never even heard of M. Preg before I encountered Amy Bellows and mm-hmm. and the the first book I ever did with her and it blew my mind it really like just like cracked me open and I was like wow this is like this is kinky and creative and fantastical and 
brilliant. Um, and ever since then, I've just, I just love it. So I don't know where we started with that. <laughs> it's but. all well. It's a it's a good gig for somebody like you and and and, and me uh, certainly. <clears throat> um, there's nothing better than being able to lock myself in this booth for five six hours a day and act like other people um, and be able to tell good stories. At the end of the day, I've been a storyteller my whole life. Um, I started as a musician and an audio engineer, and and now this. I'm a storyteller at heart. That's what I do. Give me a good story, and I'm I'm happy as pigs and shit. I'll sit here and do it all day long. So there's that aspect of it. You were also touching on a couple other aspects, though, which I really enjoy. When I, when Impreg first crossed my desk, I did not think anything that you just said at all. Now, that being said, I'm a fucking 12-year-old boy at heart. And I thought, <laughs> these guys are shitting babies. That's what I thought. Um, and, in fact, sometimes that does happen. But um, I was wrong in a number of ways. And it took getting into a good MPREG book for me to see that the stereotypes are much easier to be broken down in these as opposed to absolutely, like you said, MF romance. Nothing wrong with MF romance. Uh, awesome out there. But the fact is, mm -hmm. a lot of what we see in MF romance is exactly what you described with those stereotypes. And a lot of people uh, make the transition. They know that they enjoy romance, but they've read one too many of the MF romance. And sometimes an MM romance gets shoved into their face. And suddenly they find a new home. And then the transition from that to Impreg, where you're still able to really explore some of those, some of those uh, power struggle issues that happen in MF romance, now get transferred into the Omegaverse and into Impreg. And it's a whole new ballgame. You're absolutely correct. I wish I was as smart as you, and I wish I would have figured it out earlier. But in the beginning, I was just like, I just look and laugh. Just, pff, what are we doing here? Um, that being said, I do have the award as the Butt Baby King. So I've done quite a few of them, and I'm, I stand corrected. I was wrong. It's a fucking serious genre, and I love it. Now, as you come, come into this genre a bit more, you'll probably come to understand what I understand at this point, that the, the fan base... And that's a poor way to put it because a lot of us are just becoming friends. It's not right even to think as fans of this, but the people, the readers in this genre are the best of any genre that I've worked in. They are fucking incredible. They're friendly. Now, I'm not saying we haven't got our, our buck-toothed cousins out there, but for the most part, these people are absolutely incredible, nice to deal with, loving, supportive. The community is like none that I've ever seen. Um, so please hang around. The water's fine. And there's plenty of work to be had, um, <clears throat> which the GRL deal, if you can plan for that next year, please, by all means, do so. And let me know if you're going. Um, we'll obviously hook up out there. But the narrators are, mm -hmm. uh, there's far fewer narrators, I mean, to the tune of like 1 50th than there are authors at the event. Um, which means we oh. get to be rock stars for a day, and it's freaking awesome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we get to walk I'll take around. It. Yeah, our job is just to walk. Oh, maybe it's just my job. I just walk around and, and make jokes, but uh, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> man. Um, I, I, one, I really appreciate you coming and doing this, and especially on short notice. You've been a wonderful guest. Um, oh, I missed oh, one thanks. question. I'm sorry. Somebody asked if you were a full time narrator at this point. I am. As of uh, uh, the two months ago, I quit my day job and just dove right in. I, I took the proverbial leap. I am a full-time narrator. I hope to be producing a lot of works um, hither forth. That's uh, your, your command of the English language is far better than mine. Um, and, and, and good job there, man. Um, I, I would ask, uh, as a courtesy, if you could, I know I missed a lot of comments out here because I was concentrating on talking to you, but um, if you could bump it in the comments after the fact here and answer any in text form that I missed, that'd be awesome. Um, and Happy to pass that. Uh, the final question, and we'll get it the hell out of here. Um, I know you, you mentioned the possible Tantor project, and you also mentioned the Amy Bellows project, which potentially is coming up next. Um, do you have anything else on your radar, what you're coming up working on that you can tell us about? Well, what is coming up on the on on things? There is um, I, I'm about to see. I'm very excited about the release of uh, uh, Bria Aleppo's um, "His Bewildered Mate," which is the first in the um, um, oh dear 
faux pas making a faux pas right here at the it's end all, i did dude, so I, well john the i can whole never way. remember him either trust me no problem but actually I'm, I'm friends with bria and congratulations she's a great author yeah she's a really great author her uh his bewildered mate was a, a really fun really interesting project to work on a lot of a lot of characters and a lot of really distinct personalities that were terrific. Uh, that is in the the works to be. It's all wrapped up and finished, and it's just awaiting the the whole bureaucratic process of getting released. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, hopefully, I'll be um, doing something with Katie Manns this month in the MM Paranormal uh, Romance Group. And then she's got a sequel to We Choose You that uh, she is near finished writing at this point. And so we'll hopefully be releasing the, the audio and the print version in close proximity to each other at the end of the summer. Excellent, man. You got a, you got yeah, a lot so going on. There's a lot going on these days, John. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good life, man. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's pretty killer. I, don't, I can't believe I get to do it. Um, this is uh this is it. This is the easy part. All you got to do is wave at the camera, and we will see y'all later. Oh, hey, anybody watching in Discord tonight? I'll be back in about a half hour or so to finish up this last project. See y'all later. Beautiful. 